Hey, what's up guys? Tom and t 2 here of Retribution Gaming, and in this video I'm going to be showing off my Wingrave build and some variations of it. The builds I'm showing you today have been more optimised compared to when I done the Reaver King speedrun with Wingrave. Um, with this, we've got better rarity echoes involved here, so we're gaining a lot more stats. A couple of things have changed since then as well to really push out some more damage, push out some more break. So, to start off, we are going to be running the Beastmaster accessory set. This gives you 10% total to weapon power, max health, and break power. This is my main build, okay? So, we're going to be running the Broodmother and also Equilibrium. We then also have uh, the Frostbeak. This is just to get the HP up. They don't want to be too low on the HP because of the heals and stuff. We then have a bunch of bloodletter echoes as expected weapon power break power all that good stuff cross slot i have the bone stomper echo uh, managed to get that in epic we then have hollow horror in the balance slot uh on titan's bane we are going to be running the ice blaster echo and the reason we're going to be running that is simple titan's bane break power got nerfed so we also need to compensate that so ice blaster is purely on the titan's bane one just to compensate the break power nerf they received outside of that we then have the rivermore echo and if you're following this build exact you would want a blue variant of rivermore echo in here so you're then at capacity and that is pretty much this build so you're going to be rocking uh 2.8k max health 1.5k resilience 9k weapon power 2.1k ability power, 1.9k crit rating and crit power, 3.3k break power, 4.6k physical defense, and 3.7k mag defense. Now, we do have some variation that we can add to this build without having to change it all around too much. So, if you're after extra break power, what you can do in both of the rush slots is add in Goblin Scavenger Echo on Wingrave it will go up to rank 2 on the rare rarity and on Titan's Bane it can go fully max no problem giving you over 4k break power to play with here with that also said though if you're looking for more weapon power and less break what you can then do for the rush echoes is take the Eichelin echoes again rank 2 for rare rarity on Wingrave because that would take you to 300 out of 300 and then again for Titan Spain you can max that out um, also if you do need even less break power and just more damage you can take off the Ice Blaster Echo and just add in another blood letter there just with the two Eichlin Echoes that will take you up to 9.7 weapon power and that will give you 3.3 break power to play with if you do swap out that other echo however that will then take you up to 10.2k weapon power but it will lower your break to 2.7 with that also said for those of you that like playing with sword and shield i have got a variant here of that so the same process again however it's not going to be as break intensive um and i do have some lesser echoes on the sword and shield in the example here but as you can see like we're running hollow horror there for the resilience and weapon power equilibrium again that's a flex slot if you want it to be we have the ice blaster echo with sword and shield you're doing less damage anyway so it's kind of important you may as well just break the bar quicker to get more damage out and then we have the frost beak echo in there just for max health just topping this up you can kind of swap this out if you guys wanted to as well with that all said though that would give you total stats of around 4k hp 2.4 almost 2.5k resilience 8.3k weapon power 2.1k ability power 1.9k crit rating 870 crit power 3k break power 4.7k physical defense and 1.8k mag defense keeping in mind the type of sword and shield that you use will affect these stats so play into that as well with the echo choice another thing to keep in mind is my sword and shield build is entirely defensive it's meant to be like this tank build where the offensive build is with titan's bane 
if you are a person who enjoys Sword and Shield and wants to be more offensive, go closer with the Titan's Bane build with it. The same variations also apply as well. Now in terms of potions, I've got a couple that I'd like to suggest for these. These are ones that I've tested personally and they just feel work with the builds that I'm suggesting. So we have the Greater Arcanic Elixir 3. This increases weapon power by 35% up to a max of 810. We then have the Greater Chimeric Blood Brew 3 which increases break power by 35% up to a max of 810 as well. We then have the Purified Dragonkin Blood. Your weapons do an additional hit equal to 20% of physical damage done for 60 seconds. And last but not least, we have the Unfiltered Arc Blessed Draw, which basically charges up your ultimate meter. Okay, so I kind of messed up my Wingrove build. I went 15 Instinct, 5 Discipline, 10 Focus. However, when respec comes, and what I'm advising people to do is go 15 Instinct, zero discipline and 15 focus the reason for that is crusaders blessing under discipline is like 10 percent of the guard break you're not really feeling that effect at this point however i feel like with focus 15 with damage surge increasing weapon power by five percent i feel like that's the better investment and that's what i'm going to be rocking when respect comes so again just to clarify 15 instinct zero discipline 15 focus so going into abilities first up we have the original bubble burn build that i put out to do the reva king record with and with this you're gonna have max points in radiant pulse you're gonna have max points in divine justice and one point into judgment we then have a variation of the bubble burn build where you'll go max points into radiant pulse you'll put two into judgment and this is just so you can get healed more when you're hitting and then we still have the two points in Divine Aegis because the second level of this is the one that you need to get those Vengeance stacks to increase your weapon power. I also have two other variants here. So for this one, we're going to be putting two points into Righteous Strike. We're then also going to be maxing out our Radiant Pulse. We're going to be putting one point into Divine Aegis. And this is just so we get the bubble to extend its invulnerability by 50%, making use of that. And then we also put one point into Judgment just so we're dealing additional break damage. And last but not least, we have our final ability build. And with this build, we're going to be going in with Righteous Strike max rank. We're going to be going in with Radiant Pulse max rank. And then we have one point that we can even put into Divine Aegis to extend the invulnerability field. Or we can go one point into Judgment for the additional break. However you choose, that one's up to you. With that all said and done, that's the end of the build section of this video. I have two gameplay clips to show you. While I was making this video, a change did go out to Wingrave. They did nerf his skill 4, or fix his skill 4 in other words. So it now does double the damage when you have stacks of vengeance, instead of it giving you like 10 times the damage. So with that said and done, we're going to be showing off the speed kill of 1 minute 53. That was done before they fixed and slash pat nerfed that ability and then we also have a two-man reva king sphere 4 1 minute 55 and that was done after the nerf that's just in a practice run just just me and one other teammate just practicing the run trying to get that down on time as well if you found this video helpful at all don't forget to smash that like button don't forget to subscribe i'm tom and i'm t92 and i'll catch you guys in the next video
Get behind me! Hops. <laughs> 